Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Aisha Ibrahim. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, received a letter of thanks from the BDF Commander in Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, on the graduation ceremony of the 15th batch of Officer Cadets Al Qadsiya Brigade at the Isa Royal Military College. The BDF Commander-in-Chief expressed thanks, appreciation, loyalty and gratitude to His Majesty the King for his letter, which expressed admiration and pride in the outstanding organization of the graduation ceremony. Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa noted that thanks to His Majesty's efforts, the BDF has achieved a glory and during His Majesty's prosperous era, it proceeded steadily towards military and educational development and achieved combat and administrative accomplishments, which placed it among the top armies. The Commander-in-Chief wished His Majesty the King abundant health and happiness. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Decree 88 of 2022 appointing Maha Abdul Hamid Mufiz as a Chief Executive Officer of the Labour Fund Temkin based on the proposal of the Cabinet Affairs Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. His Majesty the King also issued Royal Decree 89 appointing Khalil Abdul Rasul Hassan as Assistant Under Secretary at the Ministry of Parliament Affairs based on the proposal of the Parliament Affairs Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. His Majesty the King also issued Royal Decree 90 appointing Maryam Abdullah Muhammad Amin as Assistant Under Secretary for Construction Projects and Maintenance at the Ministry of Works based on the proposal of the Works Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. His Majesty the King also issued Royal Decree 91 appointing a Director General at the Civil Service Bureau SCB based on the proposal of the Prime Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. According to the decree, Sheikh Rana bint Abdul Rahman bin Muhammad Al Khalifa was appointed as Director General of Human Resources Development and Performance at CSB with the rank of Assistant Undersecretary. His Majesty also issued Decree 92 of 2022 amending some provisions of Decree 50 of 2022 to reorganize the office of the Prime Minister based on the proposal of the Prime Minister and after the approval of the Cabinet. Article 1 of the decree stipulates that a new clause number 7 will be added to the second clause of Article 1 of Decree 50 of 2022, reorganizing the office of the Prime Minister, which reads as follows. Director General of the Office of Special Representative of His Majesty the King His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa with the rank of Under Secretary, followed by an Executive Director for Administrative and Financial Affairs with the rank of Assistant Under Secretary. The Executive Director of the Office of the Special Representative with the rank of Assistant Under Secretary, followed by the Coordination and Follow up Directorate and Protocol Directorate. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 67 of 2022 appointing a director at the Civil Service Bureau CSB based on the proposal of the President of CSB. Under the edict, Abdullah Khalil Abdullah Ishomili was appointed as Director of the Management Information Directorate at CSB. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 68 of 2022 appointing directors at the Ministry of Works based on the proposal of the Minister of Works. The edict stipulates the appointment of the following directors. Mohammed Saleh Ahmed Ashir, Director of the Human Resources Directorate. Dalal Abdul Aziz Mohammed Al Arayyad, Director of the Strategic Projects Directorate. Fatma Jafar Ahmed Nasser. Director of the Sanitary Engineering Planning and Project Directorate. Abdul Nabi Hassan Ali Al Kufi, Director of the Sanitary Operation and Maintenance Directorate. In line with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister regarding the afforestation plan, the Deputy Prime Minister patronized the activity of planting the number tree 150,000, which is the last tree to be implemented in line with the afforestation plan initiative of 2022. The Deputy Premier was received by the President of the Electricity and Water Authority, Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed, the Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture, Waid Limbarak, the Minister of Oil and Environment, Dr. Mohammed bin Dana, the Minister of Works, Engineer Ibrahim Al-Hawaj, and a number of officials. 
The event comes to celebrate exceeding the national goal of planting 140,000 trees this year to reach 150,000 across the governorates of the kingdom. The Deputy Prime Minister expressed congratulations to His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and affirmed that this achievement reflects His Royal Highness's keenness to achieve natural resources sustainability, to achieve the goals of the comprehensive development in line with the vision of His Majesty the King. He affirmed that exceeding the goal affirms that Bahrain is on the right track to reach net zero neutrality by 2060. He added that the afforestation plan contributes to enhancing the environmental system of the kingdom, improving the air quality, mitigating sandstorms and maintaining biodiversity. The Deputy Prime Minister wished the team responsible for the implementation of this plan further success to achieve the desired goals. The Ministry of Interior held a parade at Rifa' Sug as part of festivities on the Kingdom's National Days in commemoration of the establishment of the modern Bahraini state as an Arab and Muslim state founded by Ahmed al-Fatih in 1783 and the anniversary of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne. Southern Governor His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa attended the event. Several directorates participated in the parade along with the musical band, the police cavalry and the Al Hajjana. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Cabinet Affairs and Honorary President of the Good Word Society, GWS, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa, patronized a ceremony celebrating the 20th anniversary of the establishment of the GWS. 
His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali hailed the support that philanthropic work receives from His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He recalled the role and contribution of the late His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and the role of the advisor of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Highness Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and his encouragement to exert efforts for the interest of the kingdom. His Highness commended the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa and His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, which paved the way for humanitarian work and philanthropic initiatives. He added that the GWS, since its establishment, provided contributions that left a large impact inside and outside the kingdom. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali stated that the development of GWS is a result of the efforts toward Bahrain and the dedication of an award that carries His Highness's name that honors the leaders of philanthropic work which demonstrates the society's strategy that stems from the noble Bahraini values. His Highness expressed thanks to ministries in collaborating and supporting institutions and to the members of the society for their efforts in serving charity work in Bahrain. During the ceremony, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali launched the society's slogan and honored the society's members. The Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila Hassan, met the eighth batch of employees of the Prime Minister's program for the development of government cadres, where the Minister praised their participation in various projects, programs and training courses that enhance and refine their skills and develop their practical experience. The minister affirmed the important role of the Prime Minister's program for the development of government cadres. The minister pointed out that the program clearly embodies the ambitious visions of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to develop government cadres and provide them with the opportunity to enhance their experience, skills and participation in achieving the goals of the development process. She reviewed various issues related to the health sector, highlighting the most important responsibilities assigned to the Ministry of Health to develop sustainable policies for the health sector. The University of Bahrain organized the Bahrain Innovation and Technologies Transfer Center workshop in cooperation with the Ministry of Industry and Commerce and the U.S. Department of Commerce's Commercial Law Development Program, funded by the U.S. Department of State, U.S. Middle East Partnership Initiative, under the patronage of the University of Bahrain President, Dr. Jawahir Limbahka. The Bahrain Innovation and Technology Transfer Center works to transfer technology from the academic sector to the private sector in line with Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030. It also aims to secure and protect the intellectual property rights of academics and job seekers and provide a financial return for inventors and innovators. Since the establishment of the center, it has also been able to register intellectual property rights and patents for two applications at the University of Bahrain. The university also plays a role in promoting research and development and cooperation between academic and industrial circles to encourage students, researchers and academics affiliated with the national university to innovate and protect their rights to intellectual property and patents and promote markets and invest in their innovations commercially. Many of people who have that ability of giving or making research with an outcome that will be uh, an added value to the economy, they wouldn't know how to protect themselves. So this is part of the training that uh, my colleagues will be uh, uh, able to, you know, facilitate the knowledge to other people to be able of or be aware of how to protect their uh, innovations and inventions in that sense. So the uh, University of Bahrain already is in the process of registering two uh, um, um, inventions of our uh, staff and that will be of you know a, a, some sort of investment for the future once we have uh, the ability to market it and provide it as a uh, product uh, to be you know marketed. At Bahrain Innovation Technology Transfer our main objective is to protect intellectual property rights of the inventors at University of Bahrain, the faculty members and the students. The 
first step to technology transfer at BITTC starts with filling the invention disclosure form on the BITTC website. The inventor is able to fill out the invention disclosure form and afterwards we would conduct a commercialization analysis and as well as a legal analysis. The legal analysis would see the, the legal potential for us to um, protect these intellectual property rights and then we can commercialize these IP rights to the industry through the technology transfer uh, agreements we have at University of Bahrain. So fundamentally, the protection of intellectual property is the key to building success in the area of entrepreneurism, technology transfer, uh, app development. So here you get entrepreneurs, government, University of Bahrain coming up with ideas, figuring out how to establish the patents, and then from that they can build a new information uh, economy. So it is very important to have the BITTC uh, because it is an opportunity for Bahrain to take advantage of innovation and research at the university that then uh, can be commercialized uh, into economic opportunities. Uh, and in order for Bahrain to meet its 2030 vision goals of diversifying its economy, the BITTC will contribute significantly to increasing the amount of opportunities for innovation. The updated Riyadat program was launched at a press conference organized by Tamkeen in partnership with the Supreme Council for Women, SCW, and the Bahrain Development Bank. The program provides financing solutions for Bahraini women, enabling them to establish, develop, and expand their business ventures. Assistant Secretary General of the SCW, Sheikh Adina bint Rashid Al Khalifa, highlighted the positive impact that was witnessed since the launch of the Riyadat program in 2016 in enhancing the contribution of Bahraini women to the national economy. She noted that the updated version of the Riyadat financing scheme is in line with the economic recovery plan and labor market changes. The acting chief executive of Temkin, Maha Mufiz, said that this program is a continuation of the comprehensive transformation plan announced earlier this year. She stated that the financing solutions that exceeded 7.5 million Bahraini dinars for 318 women-owned enterprises in various economic sectors were provided through the Riyadat financing scheme. The inspection department at the Ministry of Industry and Commerce continued its inspection visits across the markets in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The department emphasized that a list of prices for all commodities should be drawn up so that they are clear to consumers with verification of compliance with the commodity of the price placed on the commodity, with its price at point of sale as well as ensuring the validity of promotional offers and indicating all information before and after the offer. The ministry called on all customers to submit complaints and reports about violations in the sector about any unlicensed activities or incorrect commercial practices by communicating with the inspection department through the national system for suggestions and complaints. The Bahrain Institute for Political Development, BIPD, announced that the number of publications it launched during 2022, which reached eight specialized publications in the fields of political development, constitutional law, electoral campaign management, and the work mechanisms of the legislative authority in its two parts, Shura and Representatives. The Institute confirmed that the publications come within the framework of implementing the decree to establish the Institute by providing training programs, studies and research related to the constitutional and legal field for various groups of the society. The publications aim to spread and develop political awareness among citizens in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution and the principles of national action. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Bangladesh, in cooperation with the Ministry with the Embassy of Bangladesh and the Kingdom of Bahrain, organized a Visit Bangladesh Program 2022. More in this report. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Bangladesh organized the Visit Bangladesh 2022 program, bringing together delegations from various countries to enjoy the history and culture of the country. The delegation visited the Bangabandhu Mausoleum. It's where the father of the nation is resting in peace. The Bangladeshi people visit the mausoleum regularly to pay homage to the life of the late leader and honor his memories and achievements. 
So today we are in Tungi Para. This is the birthplace of our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. We have just visited the mausoleum of Bangabandhu where his grave here is there. And uh, uh, we will visit the uh, museum also. And uh, so actually we wanted to show uh, the media that uh, our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman's birthplace. The delegations then visited a museum next to the mausoleum where the life of Mujib al-Rahman is documented and preserved. Now we are here. This is named a village of Gopalgan district. It is Tungipara. This is the birthplace of our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib al-Rahman. He was born in 1920 on 17 March in that place. And we are here just after us. It is the ancestral home of our father of the nation, of our Sheikh family. The program was a special opportunity for delegations around the world to visit Bangladesh and be educated on its various cultures and history. We are here to pay homage to the life of Bangabandhu Mujib al-Rahman to commemorate his life, his efforts and achievements. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamad Youssef.